Hi. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this show uh, on the da hello. Welcome to the show on Job Decoders Dialogues Part Two. Uh, it's a series of in-depth conversations with industry experts that will help you navigate your career in a particular industry. In this episode, particularly, we are going to decode the EV industry for you, opportunities, challenges, and how you can prepare for it. Uh, if this is of interest to you, I suggest all of you to stay updated. Uh, can follow our career and job related information in the EV. Uh, join the EV's career circles by tag. It's an exclusive career community for EV enthusiasts where you get to interact with like minded professionals, industry experts, and recruiters from the sector. Great. So I'm Soumya Kumar. I work as a vice president for operations with People Strong uh, and Tagged. Um, and I would like to welcome. Uh, uh, our guest for the evening today here, Rajiv Vyasar. Rajiv is an IIT Madras alum, and he is a vice president for a company called E2 Motors uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, Rajiv, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Soumya. Very, very happy to be here. Hi. Good evening, Rajiv. How are you doing? Very fine, Soumya. I'm doing fantastic and good. Thank you very much. Great. So we are here today in the evening, and we have a very exciting topic uh, that we're going to discuss today. Uh, we want to talk about and get your views on the EV industry, how it's evolving. Um, and most of all, what does this mean for somebody who wants to get into the EV industry? What kinds of jobs are getting generated? Uh, so that's that's what precisely we're going to do uh, and uh, talk about so that it can benefit people. I, I would start by throwing some numbers at you, Rajiv, and then get your views on it. But before that... Yeah. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Yes, great. Thank you very much, Soumya. Thank you very much. Uh, People Strong and Tag, I think it's a brilliant, uh, I would say, initiative uh, by all of you um, in bringing the industry experts together and then giving the exposure to the, uh, the right talent pool so that uh, they are well informed and well prepared uh, with whatever that is required. So my good congratulations to you on that. And a brief introduction about myself. I'm Rajiv Vyasa. Uh, I'm a bachelor's master's from IIT Madras. Worked with multiple, I would say, uh, automobile companies uh, to begin with. Uh, TVS Motors and then five years with Bosch, part of their global leadership program called Junior Managers Program. Then I worked with Mahindra and Mahindra in their corporate startup for a stint of two years. And then I've joined uh, uh, Gati Logistics to lead their electric uh, vehicle uh, business division. And uh, I've spent almost three years with them. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the, the, the first last mile EV operations in Hyderabad with IKEA uh, were started by me. And uh, we converted that product into a white label product. And then we started, for, I mean, uh, bouncing this idea with other customers like Amazon, Big Baskets, Grofers, Flipkarts. And they were all gaga about it. This story I'm talking about almost three and a half years ago, right? And uh, then, and uh, to our interest, uh, uh, the, 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 the government body started recognizing us and our efforts. And Gati Logistics and myself, we have been invited to be a member on board in the policy making with uh, the Niti Aayog, uh, where we work very closely with the policy framework uh, making committee. And we also work very closely with Rocky Mountain Institute, which is the, uh, I would say, the consultant uh, arm to Niti Aayog. Not just with Niti Aayog, I'm also uh, worked very closely with the policymakers at uh, uh, both uh, the Delhi as a state level with Dialogue and Action Committee and also with uh, uh, the Telangana state level. And right now, I'm associated with an organization called Eto Motors. Uh, we are an OEM. In fact, uh, this, 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 this group comes from uh, the country's largest electric bus manufacturing. I mean, Electra Green, uh, the, the, uh, the country's largest electric bus manufacturing, is born out of this group. And now we are again into the game. Uh, but right now, we are focusing on uh, three wheelers, uh, passenger and, four, uh, uh, and cargo, and four wheelers, passenger and cargo. And it's been an exciting journey so far. And uh, that's a quick introduction about myself, and I'm very happy here uh, to talk about uh, my favorite subject, which is electric vehicles, and to also uh, encourage some of you who are considering a career in EVs. Uh, there is no rocket science behind it. Very, very simple for you to understand the basics. And let me tell you, if at all, the biggest threat to electric vehicle industry at this point of time is not technology, is not policy, is not costing. The biggest threat that is hindering the explosion of electric vehicle industry is availability of right manpower. Right. Which means the job market is out there waiting for you 
to jump in and to take that plunge and be benefited of it so i think at a time like this this particular i would say show is fantastic uh, soumya and now over to you and to our participants uh, to kind of ask their questions and i'm ready to help sure great so rajiv let me let me start with some numbers uh, from the ev industry right uh, that you know we've seen over a period of time so you know about 30% of the new two wheelers uh, that are sold in the world are electric two wheelers right the indian ev market is predicted to be around 206 billion opportunity by 2030 indian energy storage alliance expects ev to ev sales to grow at a cagr of around 44% between 2020 to 2027 Uh, there are 18 to 20 18 of the 20 largest oems have contributed committed to increase the offer uh, of sales of evs right and automobile sector is, expect, is expected to create employment opportunities of 35 million indians by 2026 there are these figures there are these numbers there are the, there is talk of ev companies you know uh, ramping up their sales what does it mean uh to somebody who's looking out for a job in the market for people who are trying to get employed and what do you think about the 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 ev industry what are your views on it would you would yeah. you talk about that correct correct so first of all uh, uh, uh thanks for uh, collating the numbers together you have made the job easier for me but let me tell you let me tell you certain things right this is again in continuation to uh the uh, the uh, market uh, uh, i would say information that you have shown right the first question we need to answer why is everyone crazy about electric vehicles why is the world going crazy about electric vehicles right well this is not a new craze or this is not a new uh, i would say technology which people are lining into just out of uh, fantasy but just to tell you there are certain alarming uh, i would say facts that we all need to understand now some of them which we learned right as students in terms of global warming etc now we need to understand that global warming as an effect is one entity then there is another thing called 3 degree change that means the average i would say temperature of the earth changing from its existing to the next level now these changes just for your information are something called irreversible that means once they are changed they are changed if at all people you know you can google what is this 3c right that right. we are talking about so what the world is on track to warm by almost 3 degrees celsius by the end of the century what will happen this will result in rise of sea levels if not instantaneously but then the catastrophic effect is it is irreversible and it is locked mm-hmm. and what exactly this means we will observe for example right uh, the, the certain things certain uh, catastrophic effects of that of these particular things are close to i would say uh, because of this close to one fifth of the population is going to be without i would say a land for them right raising sea levels and right. not just that are uh the the plants the animals the ocean acidification right and then the major shifts in the climate that we see untimely rains untimely i would say calamities etc are basically going to become the routine as we move forward right and right. the earth and world is going to be such a chaotic place for our generations to come that we regret for our deeds that we have been doing so far and then the future generation would curse us i think it is in this bigger interest right different i would say governments have come together different policy making bodies have come together and then they have declared a war against yeah. the uh, i would say the changing environmental conditions and then the sure. lowest hanging fruit in addressing all of these is the transportation industry because it it kind of contributes to more than 30% in terms yeah. of global warming right? right now and hence EVs come as a solution for it not not just in india but across the world i think sure. that is the main reason soumya why we are all chasing uh, the the ev adoptions these are the bigger reasons why the governments organizations and everybody is investing into it right. just if not as an exaggeration but to just make a statement i would like to make this statement here right sure. if at all if at all the world is battling anything more fiercer or fiercer than the terrorism together is the climate change 
right? It is, right. it is dangerous than the terrorism that we are talking about. Yes, and hence the shift is going to happen and hence the adoption is going to happen and hence there is a need for fully equipped and rightly informed manpower to take this particular thing forward. Right, right. No, absolutely. And, and in fact, we've seen the effects of climate change in the past one week uh, in, in Europe, in uh, you know in Hima in Uttaranchal uh, in uh, all these places where where there have been uncalled rain in China, so so what we wanted to understand from you was how do you see the EV sector growing and what kind of jobs is going to generate Rajiv? Uh, yeah. You know what? How how is that changing? What kind of multiplier effect is you know the manufacturing units, the different departments? What are your views on that? What kind of jobs can people look at? Correct. So for most of the people, when they talk about EV, it is probably just the electric vehicles alone. But then one needs to understand that an EV comprises of much more than just as a vehicle. Even right. in the forming of a vehicle, it is the glider, it is the power electronics, it is the motor controllers. Then the most important thing is battery, the battery management system, then the charging and the charging infrastructure. So right. when you enter into the world of EV, right, a lot of exciting opportunities are available, not just for the mechanical engineers, for electrical engineers, for electronics engineers, for software guys, right, for mechatronics guys. So the right. opportunities are infinite, right? So whichsoever the part of engineering you are, you still have a problem to be solved in EVs, right? right. So right. I think, uh, uh, and then the other important thing is Soumya, you need to understand that close to 2,500 components that we see in the automobile right now, say for example, the right. gearbox, for example, the engine, the cylinder blocks, etc. They are going to be non-existing or they are right. going to be irrelevant. And then right. people, and there is a lot more necessity for these people who have been working on this for the past few decades to mm. upskill, to reskill, right? Themselves right. to be made, I would say, acceptable and to be made relevant to the EV industry, right? So right. Right. I think, uh, and all those 2,500 components are just being brought down to 20, 30 components. Absolutely. And then we are still not there. For example, let me tell you why our electric vehicle costs are higher because we are still depending upon the lithium ion battery technology, which is again a very scarce lithium and cobalt is a very scarce material and mineral available in the world. And especially in, in India, we do not have them or the cost of extracting them is much higher than importing them. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot many areas right in terms of the materials and metallurgical engineering, right in terms of the battery technology, in terms of the controllers and power electronics, in terms of the mechatronics, in terms of mechanical engineering, a lot of a lot of, I would say, research is going on in reducing the weight of the vehicle because now it is very much relevant. More the weight of the vehicle, less would be the range or the mileage, right? So, right. Um, and then the traction motors, the wheel motor, uh, the, the, the the drive motors, which needs to be kind of uh, uh, rightly controlled by the the controller. So, there is an action happening everywhere, and there is a lot of need to for research to happen everywhere. And right. also there's a lot of need for multiple, not just at the research, but at the production level, uh, at the sales level, at the marketing level, at, multi, at the logistics level, at multiple application areas. It is going to open up a huge number of job opportunities for the people around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in fact, uh, the, you know, the Department of Science, uh, Department of Science Technology, they're working on uh, the EV R&D mission under which there are three separate technology hubs that they're creating, right? The EV storage, the EV drive trains, the power electronic components. No, so this brings us to another important point. So like you were saying, there are people who are working on components that will not exist anymore, right? Now, before we come to people who are not related to EV and, you know, want to enter the sector, how do you, you know, upskill these people? What kind of trainings do you think these people will have to go undergo to actually stay relevant in the EV industry? So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So uh, this is a very interesting question, uh, Soumya. Now, every organization, every organization, right? For example, I was with Bosch for about five years between 2012 uh, and 2017, right? right? Even then, right, Bosch has started a vertical or a mission more focusing on the future skill sets for its employees relevant to number one, EVs and relevant to number two, IoT. Yeah. Right. So this was just from my first hand experience of the organization that I worked with. And right. I know for sure that every automotive OEM, every organization is equipping their manpower internally through different trainings and different, um, I would say, uh, uh, learning and development programs. Mm -hmm. And not just that, majority of the larger OEMs 
are directly or indirectly invested into EVs. Just for example, how many of us know that Hero Motor Corp is one of the, I would say, key investors in Ether? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Right? And Crompton and Greaves, right, mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. also invested into EVs. How many of yeah. us know? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest business house of the country, Reliance, is investing into EV, into energy storage, right? Mm -hmm. Tata's, right? I mean, in, in terms of the uh, Shri Ratan Tata, he himself is an investor in uh, 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 in, in one uh, kind of an EV startup company based out of Pune, right? right. Somehow right. the influencers, the uh, the industry persons are already invested into it, and yeah. then the people outside, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, the people inside uh, the EV technology, they know where they need to expand, and then. There are many universities right now offering different, uh, I would say, uh, master's programs, different di diploma course programs uh, to get themselves equipped into EVs. And right. very recently, even I saw that there is a huge need, uh, right, for the right people, for the people to be equipped uh, in terms of this. And uh, I've started working with, um, again, another organization to build up again a 30 hours course, right? So that people, anybody wants to understand uh, the basics of electric vehicles and then just uh, try to get a, a head start or a kick start into it, they can also do that. I mean, there are a lot many things available in the market, but be very vigilant and diligent on, on, on whom you approach and what you take. And uh, whatsoever you take, uh, uh, be ensured that you are benefited from it. Sure, sure. So, so let's, uh, I think we lost. No, I'm here. Yes. Great. So Rajiv, what I wanted to check with you also and ask you and get your views on was, so there are these B techs, there are these M techs, there are, you know, people who've done their MS, there are people who are doing, pursuing or doing their PhDs, uh, professional working in the field of engineering design, aerospace engineering, UX designers, all these guys. And you know, a lot of queries that we got was, how do we enter? And these people are not related to the EV industry, right? How do we get into the EV industry? How do we get to ride the wave, right? Everybody wants to ride the wave. You know, there was an IT wave where people actually rode that wave, made some money, and yeah. they had loved a lot, right? So how do these people who are not associated with the EV industry now try and get there? Because, you know, sometimes uh, what happens is somebody is a BE in mechanical engineering, right? Yeah. But police come to campus and they hire them. Right. Yeah. Is that going to happen with EV industry as well? Because, like you were mentioning, there's a dearth of uh, skilled people for the EV industry. That's the biggest problem the industry is facing. So, how is this going to, uh, you know, happen? How are people not related to the industry getting going to get jobs there? Great, great. I think it's a very, very interesting. I would say uh, uh, comparison, or I would say analogy that you brought, uh, Soumya. Two thousands was all about IT boom, right? Irrespective right. of the background people come from, they could be uh, commerce background, they could be engineering, mechanical background, civil engineering background, or whatsoever they are, right? People started learning what is Java. People started learning what is C, C++. People right. started doing these certification courses. People started equipping themselves, right? That was in 2000s when the internet was not very rampant. The resources were not readily available and people really had to depend upon uh, some coaching centers, some kind of, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, certification agencies to kind of uh, onboard that IT wave. Right. But thanks to the right penetration that we have now, one need not worry of all these things, right? Right. right. They definitely need to stick, understand and stick to their, uh, understand what their core competency is into. Mm. But the, the market at this point of time has got multiple such kind of, I would say, certification uh, programs, right? Both from premium institutes, uh, from uh, from uh, uh, different other uh, skill uh, course institutes, etc. Right? right? Where the courses are curated through industry experts, right? As I said, I was also uh, helping some of them, right? Now, these courses will kind of help each one of them to get a very uh, quick, uh, I would say, kickstart or a heads up because they don't have to do a PhD, right, into this. They need to be informed about the market. They need to be informed about the policies that are driving it. They need to be informed about the technology, right? That foundation right. would be laid by these kind of courses. And from there on, and this 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 is basically a stepping stone for them to enter into the industry. And once they enter into, enter into industry, say, for example, somebody from is from, say, for example, the UI UX background, right? A lot of work is needed in terms of the dashboard designs, in terms of the UI UX for the vehicles, right? These are now these become, I do not call electric vehicles anymore automobile. I call them as gadgets. You have a mobile right. gadget, uh, you have uh, a different other, you, you have, uh, right, the wearable wrist uh, uh, smart watches. And similarly, right. this is also a smart machine. 
now right. whatsoever is involved into building a smart uh, electronics device is involved into building a smart machine which is called an electric vehicle at this point of time right so i think people need to embrace people needs to equip themselves people needs to enroll so that they don't have to grope uh, in the darkness they don't have to try to uh, reinvent the wheel by themselves uh, but this gives them a very uh, uh, good uh, kick start and once the base once the base is established then they can always build on their competencies right no i i understand so i think there's a very interesting question here uh, that we've got here uh, somebody wants to know the alternate industries from where professionals can move to ev industry jobs so uh, you know i want to take lead here while i was working with one of the leading uh, electric vehicle manufacturers uh, we were setting up the infra for ev vehicle recharge stations right now people who had experience in the telecom sector of setting up telecom towers and they had experience in setting up that particular infra we actually hired those people to set up the recharging infra for you know our uh, a, a, our company that we were actually hiring for so are there such uh, industries that can you know alternate industry where people can actually be employed from for the industries to fulfill the jobs that are getting created yeah yeah sure see you if at all you categorically look at the electric vehicle as such right if i kind of uh, dissect and then uh, see what are all the different components hmm. right there are majorly five components i would say number one the glider slash the skeleton which is the body now with respect to body who are all the pay players that can come into body whosoever would have worked on the structural engineering right, right. uh they have the direct opportunity who need not necessarily be the automobile engineers number one mm -hmm. second most important thing is the battery and the energy now this right. is where people from the chemical engineering people with pure chemistry as a phd background people with metallurgy as a background right even mm -hmm. in gliders how do i build materials how do i pick materials which are tougher stronger and at the same time lighter mm -hmm. right so that's an opportunity and now right. we talk about and then the next so now that we have glider and we have the battery we need the vehicle to move and hence the traction motors right sure. so this is where the drive motors and the, uh, the right the electrical electronical components uh, right people get a direct access to this and all these are to be controlled through controllers right so this is where the power electronics guys comes into picture this is where the mechatronics guys comes into picture this is where the software guys comes into picture because they need to kind of for code uh, right for those controllers etc and finally right. and, and importantly right the charging infrastructure right, right. the way uh, for example uh, earlier it used to be the chicken or egg story right whether it is the vehicles first or whether it is the charging infrastructure first but now the way the industry started uh, looking at is both of them are chicken and both of them are egg i mean the charging players are just going uh, right rapidly and then installing charging stations around and then the mm -hmm. vehicle manufacturers are focusing on different vehicles and then building different vehicles right so there is no longer that now when it comes to charging infrastructure you need lot many stuff you need people you need people from real estate backgrounds to be able to identify uh, this you need people from uh, the the the, uh, the uh, people who would have worked in in, in licensing licensing with the government because you need to work closely with discoms to get those particular right. transformers you right. need people from civil engineering to build uh, those panels and those pedestrians so now so far we only spoke in terms of the engineering perspective right now let right. us look a different thing which is digital marketing communications uh, perspective sales perspective right as right. much as there are opportunities in engineering uh, such as so nice stories and good stories that are happening and we need voices and people to communicate to this world so you, right. there are a lot of opportunities in communications we need yes. people to sell this technology to the people so there are opportunities in sales you need people who can kind of maintain these projects right intact and ensure that the product is into the market at the right uh, and appointed time so you have project managers and product managers right so i think the whole uh, i would say uh, ev as an industry is embracing every i would say skill set that is out there in the market is opening up an opportunity for everyone irrespective of their stream irrespective of their background to come and join in this industry and there is scope for everybody including the human resource the most i would say i would say ignored or neglected one i am sure uh, uh, soumya you yourself worked very closely on the ola electra uh, before taking up the role with isb i know you have been heading the talent acquisition from ola i am sure right while people are talking about ola electric and then the scooter right now the seeds for it were i kind i kind of sown almost 5 6 years ago 
and you would have uh, uh, kind of uh, looked into the market how do i identify the right uh, right uh, i would say talent pool to lead this uh, electric vehicle as a mobility in industry right but right. i'm sure definitely now the talent pool has uh, gone bigger and you will get them very rapidly easily so even including the human resource right uh, there is an opportunity and also a lot many innovative business models are entering into evs it is not just a retail customer that i just go buy a vehicle right the lowest hanging fruit is the cargo segment amazon yep. flipkart etc are declaring that right by 2025 i will have all my last mile deliveries through evs right a lot many business innovative ideas are to are to be there so a lot of opportunities for the businessmen entrepreneurs the analytics guys finance guys right the accounts guys a lot many opportunities for everyone so i think yeah i i definitely agree with you i think uh, the spin off effect of the ev industry and the manufacturing unit being set up is huge right uh, all kinds of people who have all kinds of experience but i have a knack for the ev industry for vehicles are people who can be absorbed into this industry and you know just to add to it technology is going to be a huge part of it right uh, with the scooters that are coming out now where the speedometer gets integrated to your maps so a lot of technology people embedded developers people who are front end back end uh, you know ui ux developers all these people are going to be part of this industry they just have to have the knack for it and of course there are these courses out there which you know can actually give them the understanding of how a, a electric vehicle works right so also what we wanted to check with you and get your views on the charging infra uh, rajiv you know what do you think about that so there are these huge factories being set up vehicles being manufactured every minute you know so many vehicles being manufactured every minute but what about the charging infra how how can we adopt ev vehicles if there is no infra what are your thoughts yeah. on that yeah so that's an interesting question uh, soumya before i answer this question i would like to kind of educate uh, give some kind of an educative information so that uh, uh, the, the 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 thing is rightly positioned see when we talk about charging infra and when you look at the world there are majorly four different protocols right now you might ask why there are four different protocols the reason is every very simple everybody wants to be the leader everybody wants to uh, kind of set uh, a secure his or her uh, i would say uh, future and hence nobody wants to kind of collaborate at this point of time and hence we have four what are they the first one is gb by t protocol which is basically which comes from our uh, our, our beautiful neighbor china uh, the second one is uh, ccs which comes from uh, the european standards the third one is chademo where nissan and all these korean japanese companies uh, invest into and then the fourth fourth important thing uh, where he says that hey i am cut above everyone i don't care uh, who's ever car but i have my own that is our favorite elon musk right he comes with tesla supercharging network right right i think these are the four different charging infrastructures available and unfortunately india as an organization india as a country and a market entered late so we have no option but to kind of facilitate all those four to adopt all those four nevertheless the department of science and technology is working very closely with uh, different other institutes in the country especially with isro and other premium institutes in trying to develop right the adopters in trying to develop the controllers uh, in trying to uh, develop the technology which would be even more affordable than all these four or which can make all of these uh, protocols interchangeable though it is easy said but not actually uh, that easy to be implemented so in terms of charging infrastructure a lot of i would say uh, r and d uh, is happening right now now mm-hmm. apart from this india has launched its own uh, uh, dc001 uh, charging ac001 uh, basically slow charging and fast charging uh, etc so these are the four protocols that are available these are the things that india is battling uh, india is bringing right now now in terms of the opportunity uh, see now when you look at the vehicle right now the recent trend that was going to come especially from the commercial vehicle segment is that people are going to detach vehicle and the energy and energy mm. would be more paper usage kind of an energy right mm. and mm. more i would say organizational players would come who would own up the battery and who would own up the complete charging infrastructure right very soon the indian oil corporation and hpcl of course they are already partnering with multiple players but very soon they would themselves uh, make their uh, i would say fuel stations uh, ev friendly right so right. when this is going to be uh, the case and uh, uh, and then every, every and then uh, if you look at the policies very closely every new apartment shopping complexes etc there is going to be a mandate that all of them needs to be ev friendly they needs to have x number of parking slots only for electric vehicles along with the uh, parking and charging infrastructure 
so the opportunities both in terms of the uh, the research and development opportunities both in terms of the application opportunities both in terms of the innovative business models where these are disengaged right vehicle and the battery is disengaged and people pay per usage of uh, charging right? right all of them exists yes right no that's that's very interesting in fact the charging infra is going to generate its own set of jobs that is going to come in the market right which is also going to be huge with yes, india yes. trying to build out yeah true to please go ahead very true very true and with india trying to build big giga factories now right and we already hear about we are building a huge factory uh, in tamil nadu and tesla coming to india uh, it's it's definitely going to be huge right and we all are very excited uh, to understand uh, how are we going to you know because in india we have a lot of people who we can actually skill and these people can actually become part of the industry so what are your views on that the giga factories that are going to come up uh, do you think it's going to employ people only around where it's going to be built or it's going to pull pull people from different states do you think migration is going to happen what are your views on that great great so interestingly uh, soumya if you look at uh, if you look at the whole country uh, right in terms of uh, what it is into i do not know whether it is by design or it is by accident the country already kind of segregated itself into four major clusters right automotive clusters i'm talking from the automotive perspective one cluster is around uh, the the gurgaon ncr area where you have players like maruti suzuki hero jcb yamaha honda etc mm -hmm. then then the other beautiful cluster is pune mumbai cluster right maharashtra and uh, the borders of karnataka where you have bajaj daimler force motors toyota general motors piaggio scania volvo everybody then to the uh, to the central india we have indore indore uh, gujarat and indore right uh, a bit uh, central and uh, west uh, culture, uh, cluster where you have iShare Honda right John Deere and Tata Motors right and then mm -hmm. in the south you have Chennai Bangalore Coimbatore as a cluster of course the Hosur uh, belt also where you have Ashok Leyland Hyundai TVS Motors Royal Enfield BMW Ford Renault Tafe Bosch right? right so interestingly these four clusters already uh, only now in the eastern side if you see uh, there is definitely again uh, 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 in Kharagpur uh, again uh, you have uh, manufacturing setup and uh, very less of uh, li very limited automotive direct uh, other than the other than the construction equipment companies such as uh, uh, right that are there so interestingly the clusters are already uh, existing uh, 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 Soumya now mm -hmm. the beautiful question is will play for example Ola picked up one of these clusters which is Hosur right right why these clusters are picked up for a simple reason that the ecosystem is already there the vendor base the supplier base right uh, is already there so they can cut down a lot on the logistics cost they can cut down a lot on the coordination cost and then things could be just in time kind of things can be actually implemented in the manufacturing processes nevertheless uh, when players like tesla when players like uh, byd when players like uh, triton when players like photon when they enter into india uh, I don't think they will be limiting themselves to the clusters because these these companies have such a strongest influence that wherever they start, they can actually make that as a cluster, right? That's the kind of uh, strength they have in terms of their uh, products, in terms of their markets, and in terms of their technology. Say, for example, uh, when when Tesla started its Giga factory in Germany, right? Around right. that area, there was never a, uh, any automotive company. But now that the Tesla has entered, that has become a cluster, right? right? So I'm 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 of an opinion that now Hyderabad as a city is kind okay. of becoming an EV cluster, right? There are so many players uh, within Hyderabad, so many manufacturers, so many suppliers, so many uh, base, and then. Mahindra is launching uh, their EV tractor manufacturing out of Zahirabad, which is again a one, two hours drive from uh, uh, Hyderabad. Uh, then, uh, uh, or, or, I mean, Eto Motors uh, I mean, say manufacturing unit is in Jacharla, which is again an hour's drive. So, mm. what I'm trying to say is Hyderabad, fortunately, is becoming another such cluster. And right. when these players come, when I when I, I really look forward for the lot of localization of uh, Tesla's vehicle instead of just getting the uh, CB units being imported. And when those things happen, new clusters would come. And when new clusters would come, I prefer that these are distributed across the country because I don't believe in migration of people because I believe that people should be where they are and they should be given opportunities so that 
they enjoy the time with family they enjoy the time uh, with the society that they are brought up in and yet they have opportunity to earn a living right right, uh, right. so i strongly believe in it and i very strongly agree with uh, the kind of projects that you have worked as part of dv uh, where you are trying to solve this particular problem so i think even in the ev industry the unset clusters are already there but i'm hoping right. that these bigger players kind of completely erase that clusterization and then say that boss the whole country is open um uh, right and then uh, people need not migrate from one area to the other sure. now that interesting you answer on the question that one of the comments we read here is you know the existence of a cluster for ev jobs specifically for ev like you know bangalore for it jobs so you know maybe hyderabad for ev jobs going to be another cluster but i would yes. like to take a step back rajiv and uh, bring up a very interesting point that he brought out was uh, the upskilling that will be needed right uh, for people who are out of the ev industry who are trying to enter the industry and also for people who are existing in the ev industry now that brings us to a a huge opportunity where a lot of skilling companies need to come up a lot of upskilling has to be done from the government side from also private players right uh, what are your thoughts on that do you think that you know what person are we there and you know how much journey do we need to cover in terms of reskilling upskilling these people inside the industry and outside the industry yeah so let me also take a different approach to answer this question uh, soumya india has always been an agrarian economy mm. right centuries ago we were dependent on agriculture animal raising cattle breeding and etc and even our gdp was mostly uh, i would say dependent on that to certain level right but off late what happened is the economy moved from an agrarian economy to industrial economy so there was need for people to be skilled into manufacturing there was a need for people to be skilled into industrialization a lot of agricultural labor started moving industrialization then few more years into the future a new sector called a service sector emerged an it sector emerged right where now the job creation was not just limited to the industrialization and mecha- mechanization but it moved towards the service sector then again people needed to be upskilled from a regular i would say manufacturing processes towards right adopting this and i see the same thing here now mm. from a regular automotive regular sector perspective now a new thing called evs is booming and yes people needs to be upskilled they needs to be even more players to come into this particular area the government is working very closely and then this upskill happens across the ladder right across the it is it is not just at the engineer level it is also at the operators level the assembling of a regular vehicle is different from the assembling of ev in fact ev assembling is more like a telephone assembly right you don't need huge uh, assembly lines because Mm. motors batteries etc come in sub assembly components and these uh, probably i mean i am i am aware of the micro assembly units which are as big as 1100 square feet can you believe that from where three wheeler elect- three wheelers electric three wheelers are manufactured and come can you believe that you don't really need acres right, right. so the upskilling is required at multiple layers in the ecosystem and mm. there is a lot of i would say business opportunities Uh, for these players who are coming into this upskilling industry and uh, um, uh, and and the industry also recognizes and industry needs it sure sure in fact one of the comments here from devishish was that you know will the ev industry replicate the organic fuel automotive supply chain or do you think it's going to be transnational i think you partly answered that bit but if you could throw some light on that as well do you think it's going to be transnational or just uh, like the fuel automotive supply chain which is existing no it, it um uh, i i think ev industry would open up new i would say supply chain uh, uh, opportunities would open up new uh, avenues for more players to enter in certain players who have got no scope so far to play in automobile would also start playing their role mm-hmm. so i i i, I think uh, it is going to just open up the complete things and it is not going to be limited by any such kind of a supply chain constraints mm-hmm. right so you know also if you could throw some light on what are these some of these courses that are existing in the ev industry that we can probably you know some of these people can take to upskill themselves are there any courses that are existing right now in the market yes yes so uh, uh, just to tell you uh, and for the benefit of the uh, uh, organizations i do not know if the organizing organizing team has access to uh, the course uh, i have been working very closely with one such kind of a uh, i would say skilled uh, uh, academy uh, which is called as edify path again to bring that particular course because 
that is what i have realized that uh, people wants to people want to get into the cb industry but they do not know where to start right mm -hmm. so i have curated this uh, i would say 30 hours of content right uh, where people can actually log in uh, understand everything from the global perspective it starts from the global perspective it talks about factors influencing the drive of evs brings it yeah. to the output, uh, to the indian context and then talks about multiple i would say facets of evs and how one can kind of uh, equip themselves so such courses are there uh, and uh, uh, probably if the if the organizing team can kind of post that link in the comments uh, then people can uh, make use of it so sure. they can also they can also probably grow uh, i would say uh, google saying that uh, ev course uh, by rajiv vyasar maybe they can get it sure by sure. edify path they can get it so sure. lastly i think uh, you know before we end this conversation and uh, just wanted to get some of your views on how many jobs do you think is the ev industry going to generate just a ballpark figure in the next uh, next one year maybe with you know these giga factories coming up the energy station being set up the infrastructure being set up uh, what kind of numbers do you look at well that's a very tricky question <laughs> uh, somya uh let me answer this um, from a macro level because it is difficult to predict what is the immediate job opportunity being created in just one year let me give it at a macro level uh i would say uh, in the next i would say 3 to 5 years more than a million direct and indirect jobs would be created just through electric vehicles as an industry hmm in fact uh, for people who are actually looking at it i i do not have the direct access but uh, to, uh, to it right now but i have curated this data as part of the course where it rightly predicts the number of jobs that are going to be opened and the number of jobs that are being targeted by the government uh, right as part of the ev industry that is there excellent, excellent. but so these jobs that are getting created especially you know for marketing professionals for sales professionals for channel development professionals do you think that's going to be limited to the tier 1 cities or do you think that's going to spread to tier 2 cities or tier 3 cities as well uh okay so when it comes to the corporate kind of a roles corporate kind of a jobs where the communications are basically controlled or monitored from center uh, uh from the marketing and communications perspective probably it might be limited to the uh, to the uh, head offices which are entire uh, probably metro center one cities but when it comes to the field sales when it comes to the sales it is going to penetrate right in fact uh, 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 just to tell you uh, uh, one of the uh, strongest uh, i would say now uh, 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 people from rural areas are able to appreciate the importance of evs and uh, right. they have become one of the strongest adopters because in the in the cities uh, the it is otherwise the government has to push uh, for the ownership of uh, ev vehicles right but uh, right. In, in in the rural areas there is a pull correct so the market is going to pick up from there and there is a lot more need for service industry there is a lot more need for manufacturing setups to be done there there's a lot more need for sales people to be right. based out of this uh, uh, these things so when it comes to corporate communication marketing etc it might be limited to the tier one and metro cities but rest of all would be penetrated across the country very interesting very interesting no i think this has been a very insightful session rajiv and thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us um uh, i would just want to remind the uh, the the people here who are uh, watching us you know talk about this that we keep doing these sessions the job uh, decoding session this is part 2 of it we had done one earlier and if people are interested in such uh, information on you know what's happening in the industry what jobs are there how do they connect people and also if they can actually want to uh, you know get a mentor to talk to they can join our career circles which we will post Uh, in the link here with this session and uh, they can become part of it and we'll keep doing the session we'll keep talking to industry experts bring them here talk to them uh, understand what are their perspectives on the jobs that are being created uh, uh, on the industry that they are in and uh, we'll keep educating people and keep helping people please do go to our uh, tag website uh, and join the career circles and we'll help you all connect with mentors there thank you so much rajiv uh, thank you very much saumya thank you tag team and just to tell you i am i am a ment one of the mentors on tag uh, mentoring the uh, students yes. there so don't yes. miss to join and uh, yeah happy to guide happy to coach and happy to mentor thank you very much all of you have a happy weekend happy weekend rajiv and we'll catch up with you soon again thank you so much thank you very much see you bye bye you. good night